I run a relatively modern desktop system with a 3600X and a Radeon 570. It's by no means current gen, and it's by no means the fastest thing out there, especially in the GPU department, but it does basically everything I need it to do. But there is this segment of the Linux world that likes to run these really, really ancient ThinkPads. And if it was just for like the ThinkPad nub and the ThinkPad nipple, you would just go and buy a new ThinkPad. And it's certainly not for the performance of the device either. So any of the ThinkPad guys out there, correct me if I'm wrong. But going over various forum posts and places where people talk about these ThinkPads, these seem to be the reasons why most people use them. One of those being device modularity and repairability. At least while it's still very, very easy to find these parts, because they were very popular corporate devices, there are hundreds and thousands of parts available, and they're still available for fairly cheap. They are on the very short list of devices supported by open source BIOS solutions like Core Boot and Libre Boot. You've basically complete access to the embedded controller firmware, giving you fairly low level access to the hardware. And this has been really, really well documented over on the ThinkPad wiki. The systems are old enough where the CPUs that ship with them don't ship with the Intel management engine, which depending on who you ask, might be a pretty serious security vulnerability. I haven't looked into it enough to really see if that is the case, but some fairly intelligent people seem to think that it is a serious problem, but it's also not old enough where the CPU that comes with it is basically unusable for modern tasks. And you have the ability to run a completely free software system, at least as defined by the FSF, which ignores all of the things that you can't really fix, like the proprietary microcode on the CPU. Sure, you can choose just not install any updates, but it's still always going to be there on the device itself. While buying these ThinkPads and parts for them right now is really easy, what about 10, 20 years from now, where a lot of those parts start to dry up? Obviously, all of the plastic bits are fairly easy to replace. If none of the official parts are available, you can easily 3D print them. But what about things like the CPU and the motherboard? Those older devices aren't being made anymore. Eventually, they are going to run out let alone the fact that by that point, most of these devices would basically be unusable for modern tasks. And I'm sure most people aren't thinking about this, but I'm going to. What is the end goal here? Where do you go after you can no longer go to the ThinkPads? Because no matter how many of these old ThinkPads you buy, they're not going to start getting manufactured again. That's just never going to happen. So at some point, you have to find something different. And I've seen a couple of different answers online. The main one seems to be going over to a company that is dedicated to repairability. Companies like Framework and System76. In the System76 case, they already ship their devices with a modified version of Core Boot and also have an open source embedded controller. In the Framework case, that's still a fairly young company. I think they've only been around for like maybe a year and a half at this point. So sort of banking on them in the long term is hard to really make a decision on. And right now they still haven't gone and taken those steps with Core Boot and the open source embedded controller, but they have said they are interested in doing so. And in Framework's case, if they ever stopped selling spare parts, it would sort of destroy their entire brand because their entire gimmick is the fact that everything in the system is available for purchase and you can literally build the laptop from scratch. But this still leaves you with a problem. No matter how open the rest of the system is, it still leaves you with the scary modern CPU. Intel has their Intel management engine, but AMD really is no better in that regard. They have the AMD secure technology. Once again, I still don't know if they are actually as scary as some people say they are, but going by the logic that they are, you're going to have to find some way to get around that. Also, if you want something that is actually truly open, you need to be getting off of x86, because x86 is proprietary and there's no way to get around that. So, do you wait until RISC-V is viable then? Over time, I've changed my opinion on RISC-V. Nowadays, I don't think it's going to bring about all of these open consumer CPUs. Yes, there is going to be a lot of these sort of lower end devices that do have these open CPUs and more people are actually able to create these devices. But at the consumer level with companies like Intel and AMD, which are not going to go away as soon as x86 starts to seem like it's dying, 
they are going to try to shift over. And when they do, the CPUs they make are going to be just as proprietary as before, but this time they're just using an open standard. My prediction now for Risk Five is when we see mainstream CPUs, there is going to be a proprietary chip design, there is going to be an Intel management engine like system, and there is going to be proprietary microcode. If that does not happen, I will be genuinely surprised, but I think it's going to be exactly the same as today. But let's just say they are open CPUs. That doesn't really address the laptop problem. If you want something to be in the laptop form factor, just having an open CPU doesn't mean the rest of the device is going to be open. You sort of need a company to build that, that has the same sort of goals as you, not just trying to build a mainstream device. Like, hey, here is the next random Dell laptop with everything being proprietary, but look, it has an open RISC-V CPU, so it must still be open then. But if you're willing to compromise on the portability of a laptop, which many people with laptops don't use them portably anyway, build a desktop system. Doing a bit of digging, you would genuinely be surprised with how much open source hardware is out there. Things like, you know, Ethernet cards and things like that. It's not going to be on the mainstream stores. It's not going to be from the, you know, main companies that are out there, but a lot of this hardware does exist. And because you literally built the system yourself, it's obviously going to be very repairable and very modular. And if you're using a lot of this open source hardware, it's fairly easy to get parts for a lot of it if you actually need to repair those specific individual components. Once you've built it, you go and stick Linux on it, and then just go about your day. Or the final option is basically know when to pick fights. Hardware isn't one of those places where you're easily going to win. I don't think you're going to make the entire PC hardware industry start making stuff open. I think it makes a lot more sense to focus on the software side where individual users have a lot of control and individual users can make a lot of change to the sort of openness of the software available. But at the end of the day, I personally don't own a ThinkPad. So if you do own a ThinkPad, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you plan to do. If you even thought about it really, or you think, oh, I'm just gonna keep using a ThinkPad forever into the future. If at some point I can't use a modern web browser, I'm just going to use a text-based one. I know there's going to be people who like that, and I would love to hear your thoughts. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to the Barrow Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.